Uh, it was called Farr's disease, F-A-H-R apostrophe S. The, the genes changed and for him, in his body, he started having deposits occur in the brain mm -hmm. that changed the way the brain functioned. Mm -hmm. We got back to what we thought was normal and then things seemed to just, you know, they didn't go as normal as quite we expected and then they started going downhill again. I mean, I knew mm -hmm. that I was meant to take care of him mm -hmm. as long as he could possibly live. Mm -hmm. When did you both, as things were kind of getting, declining with his health, when did you really start considering death with dignity and looking into that as an option? Well, like I say, he had, he had looked into that yeah. long before he even was dis disabled. Mm -hmm. But he had always believed that uh, life, in, when one is incapacitated, is not worth living. It seemed to be a relief for him when we set the date. But when it came to the things that were really emotional for him, he didn't talk mm -hmm. an awful lot. And so um, he would not say that, you know, I'm tired, I want to let go. It was just, uh, you know, like, when is our appointment with the second doctor? Okay, mm -hmm. all right, you know. When, when is the medicine coming? Uh, that, that's sort of the way it, it would come out, mm -hmm. that he was ready. Mm -hmm. We let his former students, that uh, there was a special group of students because he had taught German for, many, for a number of years and we had had many activities that we did with those students, including taking trips to Europe with them so they could practice their language. Mm -hmm. um, we let them know ahead of time that he had chosen. We, we were going to have an, an end of life point mm -hmm. that he was choosing. And uh, they wrote all sorts of letters of acknowledgement and, and gratitude and so forth. And I posted them on colored papers around here for the people who were here for the evening with us to be able to read when we went back to the bedroom to take the medicine. No, actually, uh, it was whoever wanted to go back. Uh -huh. So we had the volunteer, we had the chaplain, she came back there, and then she would come out here and, and talk with the other people. One of the neighbors, she and I helped um, support him while he was taking the medication and until he was ready to lay down and sleep. Once the process was completed, um, and I actually didn't write the obituary until that night after everybody had left and I had cleaned up things. And I, at that point, I put it aside and in less than 24 hours later, I went back to continue working on it. And I said to him, you know, please let me know that, that this is what you wanted, that everything's okay. Mm -hmm. And I got my sign really? that he was in heaven, in, you know, so to speak. I mean, he was so joyful. The feeling I got was of such amount of joy it was just a, it was at a being feeling. released.